practice days before the AFC title game, it's not that big a deal. If you are limited in practice on Wednesday as a result, it's kind of a big deal. You miss practice Thursday and the line starts to move towards Jacksonville's favor. Okay, now it's kind of a big deal. CC, should we be concerned now that Tom Brady has missed practice? Shouldn't be concerned that he potentially banged his hand on Wednesday uh, and potentially missed summer practice, but definitely concerned, big concern that he misses practice on Thursday. That's the most significant day. Wednesday and Thursday are the heaviest days as far as running and passing for the implementation. The implementation. Impl yeah. Implementation. Guys, let me get you. I got you, yeah. bro. Installation of the game plan. <laughs> so those are the biggest days, and Thursday's the biggest passing day. Friday is window dressing, throwing out things that you don't like. So it is significant when a workaholic like Tom Brady does mispractice. This isn't a fake injury, guys. Like this is the the I, the lengths. I know the Pats like to do a little misdirection. The length, not in that. The length yeah, in which the Patriots up. would have to go for this to have not occurred. Like, listen, Tom, we're gonna take you out of practice. We're gonna put some fake thing on your hand that people are gonna read a photograph. You're not gonna. Pre this happened, yes. and we won't know. We won't really have any idea how significant it is until we see him warming up on Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. One thing that is, I think, in the Patriots' favor in this regard, and you mentioned it earlier, both of these games, the forecast is, CeCe's Doppler has told me, yeah. unseasonably warm. It will be in the 50s on Friday in both Philadelphia and in Foxborough, high around 49 in New England on Sunday. So that that is, we thought that would be good for Jacksonville, but that's good for a quarterback with a hurt hand. Yes. The Falcons and Matt Ryan are working on an extension. Atlanta said this is their top priority this offseason. Ryan is entering the final year of his contract. CC, is Matt Ryan a top-tier quarterback? Yeah, absolutely. And they realize that they have to sign Matt Ryan. He's one of the elite quarterbacks. Where you put him in that tier don't matter to me. I don't like to make a list, but you can win the Super Bowl with Matty Ice. Oh, my partner, I can see him over there jotting down some stuff. But yes, he is an elite quarterback, and he deserves the contract extension with the Falcons. I heard you say list. Did you want the did you want the list? Hey, give me a list. I, yeah. okay, I, I love lists. Give me one. All right, so where Matt Ryan ranks, I'm doing this off my head. Rogers, Brady, Breeze, Wilson, Big Ben, Cam. There's your six. Matt Ryan right there. Carson Wentz got to see how he comes back from the knee injury. Deshaun Watson. So at best he's seventh, at worst he's twelfth. That means you gotta pay him. Now I am curious if we've seen the Lions go through, as we've seen other teams go through. Once you pay the quarterback, can you keep the rest of the talented players around? The them? only thing in the last few years, their salary cap has gone up incrementally faster than we thought. So it's not as hard as the Joe Flacco. So they're starting right. to be able to recover from that. Absolutely. And Matt Ryan's a lot better than Joe Flacco. That was a tough one to recover from. To the NBA now, James Harden returned to the court for the first time in three weeks. He only scored 10 points but the Rockets cruise to a 116-98 win over the Timberwolves. So, Nick, now that Houston, we no longer have a problem, can the Rockets challenge the Warriors with a fully healthy team? Just a note, Jenna, and I know you don't like critiques on your scripts. People in Houston despise that term. Guess so where this, we live. Well, There's we, one city that we, despises we, okay. it. And, and everyone else finds it wildly hilarious. Uh, let's, <laughs> do, the, do the Rockets present a problem for Golden State? I... They right now present the biggest problem of any team in the league, as they are presently constituted. Now, Golden State's still a favorite, but the Rockets have their best equipped to beat Golden State. Minnesota's really good this year. They blew them out without Harden playing well. That's noteworthy. Yes, this is the second most talented team in the NBA. Don't be mad at him, Jenna. He's our partner. <laughs> we, can't, we can't pick our partner. Is it between <laughs> the teasing? This team the is very, teasing. very, very talented and they play a style that matches up with Golden State so not only talent but it's also a style that's comparable to defeat the Warriors all right and finally are you happy with the word finally is there a city that doesn't like that word go ahead Nick. I... yeah Buffalo <laughs> the, finally <laughs> well, the NBA all-star starters were announced yesterday in the east LeBron leads the way with Kyrie Giannis Joel Embiid and DeMar DeRozan and in the west the starters will be Steph Curry as your captain my captain as a Literary reference, I probably didn't know that one. Followed by James Harden, KD, Anthony Davis, and DeMarcus Cousins. But this year, the teams will be drafted by Captains LeBron and Steph. So we are going to do our own little draft here. Nick, you want to go first? Who would you draft if you were LeBron or Steph? Let's put together a mock draft. Okay. All right. Let's do, all right. So I'm LeBron. 
obviously, I get the first pick. CC, you good with that? You, you good yeah, with being well, Steph? I mean, yeah, I'll be Steph. Yeah, that, that's my, yeah. All right, with my number of one pick of the draft, I'm going to take James Harden. Mm. All right, no problem. We'll take Durant. Okay, with my number two pick of the draft, I'm going to take Anthony Davis. No problem. I'll take Giannis because I ain't messing around with I need some limp. All right, well, I'm going to go boogie. Get a little Anthony Davis brow and boogie combo. No problem. Put a boogie in your nose, and I'll take Joel Embiid. Oh. Joel Embiid, hit me up, Rihanna, because he's on my team. I'm the captain. I know you said oh. you make the all-star <laughs> team. I know he turned you down last night, but, you know, he don't know what he's talking about right now. What the? Okay. All right, so now we're down to two people, and you think you've boxed me in. No, I haven't all boxed that's left I mean, is It's the all-star game. They're all good, great players, the man. DeMar DeRozan and Kyrie Irving. You think I won't take the best player available because of petty personal beefs. DeMar DeRozan deserves to be drafted, man. He's had a great year. He's got Toronto in great position. You know what you This might be it. the... This I'm taking DeMar DeRozan. No problem. I'll take Kyrie, we Uncle Drew. Go there for a we while. always got a spot for Uncle Drew, man. Man, you're... Always. Look at all these little guys on your team. Little guys? What's Steph going to do? What's Kyrie? Come on, man. This is going to back him down. All right. Who do oh. you think? Who do you think LeBron is going to pick first? Durant. Because they work, they, they've worked out a lot together in the past. They do have a relationship. He's going to take Durant first. So I think LeBron's going to end up in what? Golden State next year. Oh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> uh, also, Case Keenum. This is, is uh, it'll be Durant or Harden. It, those are the two best options. Now, Giannis has been campaigning for LeBron to take him. Which is an interesting one. Giannis has been getting panning for LeBron and he to team up. That one won't happen. I just, I, our producers did you a favor there, CC. They took our team off the screen quickly because we don't need America to see how molly whopped your team would be by mine. I mean, I'm like eight point favorites without even any reserves. You got no size. I mean, look at Nick. That. Nick, uh -huh. all of your bets look good until you make them. <laughs> now, you might be, Vegas might be eight points. Then when you put some money on it, uh, you can forget that. You can cut that in half. All right. Who I like my squad. Who I like my. I like my squad. Ten and a half. Two, I got two players who you despise of too. Who do I despise? Steph. I it's, and Kyrie. Look at you. Anytime you close your eyes, nothing good happens. All right, after I'm getting that. the moving on sign uh, in my ear from uh, someone telling me to move on. Uh -huh. uh, on paper, guys, the Cleveland Cavaliers own the Orlando Magic. They've beaten them 19 of their last 20 times. But last night's win was anything other than celebratory. Cavs found a way to blow a 23-point lead. In the third quarter, they missed all nine threes and shot six of 20 overall. But due to a fluky last few seconds, they eked out the win. Here's LeBron after the game. We want to play better, and we know we have the ability to do it, but right now we're in Strugglesville, so. But it felt like a win. We needed it. Definitely. It's a cerebral answer from a cerebral-looking fella after yeah. that game there. Nick, what was the most concerning part about this Cavs' very narrow escape last night? I mean, they were terrible in the second half. <laughs> it was as bad of a second half, or as bad of a half, as they've played in a win. It was the worst half of basketball they've played in a win since the first half of the Knicks game you and I went to. Remember that when they mm -hmm. uh, they were awful, they ended up right. coming back at the end? Right. We feel differently about games where teams play poorly in the first half and then play great in the second half. Like That would be an encouraging sign. There's very little to be encouraged about from last night's game. LeBron, who's usually the one constant on the team, mm -hmm. was awful. Like by He was awful by his standards, and he was below average just by really good player standards. And he had a couple perplexing turnovers late in the game. He missed his first five free throws of the game. Kevin Love continues to look like a different guy in games Isaiah Thomas plays in. Derrick Rose came back and looked just like the Derrick Rose from before the injury, which was an unplayable Derrick Rose. That's not a You didn't think he looked better than that? Unplayable? Man, he had I, nine points in 13 minutes. I just, I, I watch Rose, I, I watch Rose and I feel like he look of a team that doesn't seem to be good defensively. He looks particularly lost defensively. And to me, he can only get his points in transition. Like in transition, he can get his points. Like I just, Rose, if Rose is a part of their rotation, I think that's a bad sign. So no, there weren't a lot of encouraging signs to me, even though they got the victory. I thought Isaiah, in playing almost 30 minutes, was more explosive. He was more sudden. He looked like he knew what he wanted to do. Also, I felt like even though Cleveland did lose the big lead, um, which yeah, I don't like that, but I saw some 
in-game situations that I'd like the Bills see them. I saw them lose the lead late. I saw them trying to, when they had a go-to play, I didn't know what they would do with IT on the court with LeBron. For the first time, they went pick and roll with LeBron and IT. So that can be a winning formula for them. So getting those reps, Isaiah getting into the lane, being drawing the foul, hitting the free throws, which end up being the game winner. To me, I saw some positive things because IT was playing in critical minutes. He's almost up to 30 minutes a game. And I saw some suddenness and the half court, what they decide to run at the end of the game, I believe will pay them dividends down the road. Is the most important thing now moving forward for the Cavaliers just to get Isaiah Thomas back into game shape, in a rotation, make sure he's healthy and get him playing? Is it just Isaiah Thomas should be the focus? Well, it is. Th that is the primary focus. But as soon as that happens, they need to figure out a way to get the best out of Kevin Love with Isaiah Thomas on the court. Like, the, the, the reality is, if Kevin Love is your second best player, you're going to have a really hard time winning a title. So you need Isaiah to be your second best player, and you need Kevin Love to be a very good option as your third option. And, I mean, we can show it, like, Love with and without IT, the points are per 100 possessions. It's 32 to 21. His shoot percentage dips by, what is that, 15%? His field goal percentage dips by 5%, nearly 6%. Like, Love has just been a different guy with Isaiah Thomas on the court, and that's something they have to fix. Like, they, they cannot... Go ahead, Jenna. No, it just seems like there's no, there's no there's no solutions that are out. The only solution seems to be either stuff him in there and try to make it work, or it doesn't work. I, I don't see – it's not an option for Kevin Love to be the second option. No, though, there, there is a solution, and that's him playing more time. Isaiah Thomas is not a point guard. He is what you call a scoring guard. That means he might not run the offense as efficient as a true point guard, but he's going to be able to score the ball basketball, score the ball more than typically a point guard too. You also have to realize LeBron was the point before. He, he's at an all-time high as far as assists. LeBron is great at getting players in the position that they love to score the ball the most. So that's the compromise now. He went from LeBron was his point guard, getting in the ball where he was featured the number one option on the offense compared to IT where he is the third option and we're trying to get IT involved in the game. So that's where the Cavs are right now. LeBron James is a better point guard than Isaiah Thomas, and it's affected the rest of the offense. That part will come back around because LeBron, when they get in critical situations, him and IT will split the ball handling dude. Do you see a scenario whereby this team can be successful? No. With Kevin Love is the I will not finish my sentence question. Go, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Please, do you see a, a situation where this team can be successful if Kevin Love is your second option and Isaiah Thomas is not? No. no. I'll pause. No. So then Isaiah Thomas has to be the biggest priority right now to get up and running. Because the NBA, where it is right now, look who Golden State has. Traymond, Clay, Durant, and Steph. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have four legitimate superstar players. So you can't be like, is Kevin Love, is he good enough? He's not good enough on the offensive and the defensive end okay. to be able to match up with those players. They, the, if Love were a top ten player in the league, then maybe the solution would be, listen, we're going to do a LeBron-Love combo. IT, I know this isn't what you wanted. You're going to come off the bench. You're going to be our energy off the bench, scorer off the bench. But a LeBron-Love combo where Kevin Love is in his career, even when he's playing as well as he was a month ago, is not good enough to beat the Golden State Warriors in seven games. So that's why they have to, you, you were right, Jenna, the primary focus has to be getting Isaiah Thomas to where he looks like Isaiah Thomas. And that's why even having Kyrie as the number two option was not enough to beat Golden State. Right. So, and Kyrie is a better player than Kevin Love. And, and, and that's why IT last night took 15 shots. The game before he led the team in shots. They are sacrificing some efficiency to get IT back into rhythm, to get IT back into shape. Once they feel like, okay, he's as close to full strength as he's going to be, then they can start actually working on things. Another thing that's important to note 
is, as CC talks about all the time, NBA teams don't practice that much. They, there's a lot of travel. There's a lot of games. They, one of the Ty Lu said before this game. It's a lot of act, fake fighting, too. Okay. <laughs> we actually got to do some practicing. And it, you saw early in the game they looked a little bit better. But these guys just haven't played a lot of minutes together, a lot of reps together. So I, as far as you know, the question, anything to be encouraged or the most concerning part about the game last night, the most concerning part is, while they're working through these things, they still don't have the attention to detail to hold a lead against Orlando. The thing about Cleveland <laughs> Excuse me, is, is they are an old basketball team. And you could see that when they had the big lead. Young teams that are athletic, a lot like Orlando, are able to get back into the game. If they're not making their shot, people say it is a make or miss league. Yes, but it's also those other teams that don't make or miss, they have defense on their side. The Cavs don't have that as a holding card. So right. when they are missing shots, they are around the middle of the pack as far as NBA as far as the quality of team that they're going to put on the floor. Yeah, and my, just my last question will be, I understand what, now that you've explained it, what the strategy is in sacrificing a couple of things to make sure IT gets in there. But then you have the other side of it, which is the entire conversation we had yesterday. This team's frustrated. This team's tired. Uh, LeBron James is annoyed, and he's getting he's all, getting. Th that's all star game and the trade deadline cure all those woes. And the trade they're going to add a piece of the trade deadline. Everyone's going to get a break at the all star game, and they're going to finally be able to see the finish line. Mentally, I'm not worried about this Cavs team. Mentally, if you people remember, we talked about January last year. The last two weeks of last year, people were worried about them. They looked tired. They, Boston got the one seed, then they came out and they swept the first two rounds of the playoffs. That's not a real to me a real concern. Once the playoffs, you can actually see them in. Yourself. Jenna, he's wrong. I'm wrong. I let him get to the end, but he but he's wrong. They're, they're but gonna, at least you let him get to the end. Yeah, they're so. going to keep struggling. I actually knew what the question was. You too. did. Yeah, about Kevin Love being the number two. <laughs> the, but hold on, they're going to say what you said again. I just want to understand it. They're going to keep. You think they're going to still continue to mentally and emotionally go through these things we're talking about right now, late in the year when the playoffs are coming up? Um, before I think they're going to continue to struggle the rest of the season. Okay. All right. Interesting. All right, we're going to take a break. Guess what's coming up next? Viking star wide receiver Adam Thielen joins the show. We got a lot of questions for him. He'll talk about Minnesota's crazy ending to the last week, as well as other things. Next on First Things First. It's your first day on the job. 